letting that uh, get away and how it did and, and what you guys think you can take from it moving forward? Oh, yeah, man. Um, coming out in the, in the, in the third quarter, um, that, that it got away from us right there in that little stretch, man. And frustrating, man. Uh, we've been doing this all year, man, and we know we know what it takes. That's that's why it's so frustrating for us. Um, but yeah, man, we just got to be locked in um, as a whole together, and um, I think we'll be all right. Malik, what's it been like for you that this, on this back-to-back -back in that starting spot and playing off LeBron, uh, playing off Russ? What's been the focus for you individually? Yeah, man, um, just trying to get to the lane um, and space the floor and knock shots down, man, to to, to, to open up the, the, the court for those guys. Because um, when they're in open court, man, it's, it's kind of hard to stop both of them, man. So I've just been trying to mix up what I was doing um, to, to balance the floor and um, keep it open for them. Okay. Malik, are you starting to feel like one of the guys um, most responsible for, for the team's success or lack thereof, becoming one of the, the consistent guys that the team relies on on, on a nightly basis? Yeah, man, I, I try to take that role every – it, it don't matter if I'm playing a lot or not, man. I try to take that role and, and – and everything that comes with it, man. I, w I want, I want to be that guy. Um, so yes, sir. I've been, I've been coming in the games, thinking, thinking that, and playing like that too as well. So yes, yes, sir. Kyle. Kyle, you go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Um, just on job, 41 points for him. There was one point where he scored 16 in a row for the Grizzlies. What kind of broke loose for him, especially in that second or third? quarter stretch when he started getting hot. Yeah, man, we started fouling, man, and he went to the free throw line um, and, and started seeing the ball go in, and he got his rhythm that way. And when the guys get to going like that, man, it's it's not that much you can do. Um, throw discrepancy or really just, I guess, the, the difference in fouls. When you see something going like that happening in a game, is there something you can do to try to, um, to, try to turn that at some point? No, just keep playing. What did you think the difference was, Russ, uh, in the fourth quarter compared to how you guys played to get the lead up to where it was? Um, just our ball movement. Um, just play different. Two fourth quarters in Houston and tonight, just different. The way we played, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Russ, there, there have been times this year where after games, you guys have talked to us and you've told us, like, you know, we've seen it in spurts, we've seen it in stretches. It seemed like tonight, like, the stretches, at least up until late in the third quarter, were really long and really good. Um, how frustrating is it to see it kind of fall apart as quickly as it did the way it happened? It seemed like you guys kind of had a pretty good rhythm for most of the game. Yeah, I mean, you know, nobody likes to lose. Trust, we have good as he needs to trust the open man and do a better job with that as a group. Where is this team at in terms of building trust and finding guys like that? Um, you know, I think we're getting there. Dave? Okay. Obviously, the way you guys finished it tonight versus the way you started, but you did try out another starting lineup. So now that's that's 20, I think, in 35 games. Um, you just put in the words what that shuffle has been like, um, constantly tweaking uh, the rotation for a variety of reasons. Yeah, just uh, you got to figure it out. That's it, as simple as that. There's really nothing you can say about it but that. All right, Bill. Russ, it was third straight triple double for you. Ron scored 30 more in six straight. Um, you guys are obviously uh, doing your part, but where are you guys not getting enough? Uh, where are you guys not getting enough? I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Russ, you said that the <clears throat> approach in the fourth quarter was really different. 
Uh, what were the big differences? That I think I saw Joe Free throw attempts. Half your shots were threes um, tonight in the fourth. Do you think you guys weren't attacking as much? Was it, what, what, what was the big difference between this, this fourth quarter and these? I mean, you can watch the tell of the two and see where our shots come from. And not much in the paint, some in the paint, but um, just how long it takes to get rhythm shots, whether they were. Um, but that's neither here nor there. It doesn't matter now. At this point, just got to get ready for the next one and do a better job of um, executing, especially in the fourth. The last two, we'll start with the lane and then. Hi, I um, was wondering what kind of reaction did you have? Uh, you know, you see John Morant um, really just take over the game in the fourth quarter. Um, when you see something like that, what kind of reaction do you have as you're playing against them on the floor? I have no reaction. No reaction at all to him. That's what I said. Okay. Do you believe he's an all-star? You said what? Do you believe he's an all-star? Um, I think he was playing like that before he got hurt. Um, and he's working his way back. Uh, I'm not sure based on games missed or whatever, but um, he's been playing well for, you know, for their team and he's getting his rhythm back now. Last question here. President Mars Marshall Hill, when you see a player like John just obviously taking the leap forward and growing, just do you see kind of just the respect for just how a young player like him is able just to kind of raise his game and continue to grow a little bit? Yeah, it's good. Um, each year you want to be able to come back better in this league and this year he came back. Obviously, um, you know, once again versus us and, um, you know, we just lost the game that we, you know, could have, you know, could have won, obviously, but, you know, we learn from our mistakes and get better the next game. LeBron, there were a ton of different plays in that fourth quarter. Huh? On the last one, but were you were you looking for Russ to cut or go back? Or what, what, what did you see in that particular one? Um, yeah, it looked like Russ was going to go back door at one point, and he backed back out, and I was already in the air. I had slipped before uh, on my drive, which, which kind of threw my rhythm off. Uh, one thing Fizz said was he thought maybe the, the offense kind of stagnated, guys were looking around, and guys were also not opting for the, the easy play, easy pass to make. Um, what, where would you say that this team is in its trust-building process in terms of finding each other and making plays for each other? Uh, we watch the film and get better. You know, just got to continue to get better, um, continue to work our habits. Dave, go ahead. About it. it didn't necessarily work out um, between you and Malik on that, that last play, but how has your two development um, gone on the court together? You were complimentary of him last night. Fizz says how much you enjoy playing with him. I'm curious uh, how you guys have been able to mesh your games together so far. Yeah, just trying to continue to help him, um, you know, learn and um, have him in the right position. Um, I understand, you know, how gifted he is offensively, and um, he's on the floor with me a lot of his minutes, so. Just always trying to put him in the right position where he can, uh, you know, help the ball club, help us, help himself. And, you know, tonight uh, we had some pretty good moments. Dan, go ahead. LeBron, there's a certain element of this that with you guys that there are going to be turnovers. Like, it's just sort of, I mean, part of the way I think you guys play. But how, how big of a problem has that been, in your opinion, so far through this season? I apologize for the crying baby. But how, how big of an issue do you think that's been in kind of keeping you guys from getting – you know, more on track. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's the difference between careless turnovers and attack turnovers, and we got to cut down on our careless turnovers, the ones that's just unforced. Um, you know, we're going to have attack turnover, which is okay. We have a lot of attackers, and we understand that, but, you know, the careless turnovers where literally you just turn the ball over and there's no pressure or there's no reason for it, those are the ones that get us in trouble. Bill, go ahead. Hey, LeBron, uh, happy birthday almost. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk, and there need to be a lot of talk about what you are able to do at your age. And I'm just wondering, is there has there been anybody, any other player, either a contemporary of yours or from history, that you either studied or you know paid close attention to how they evolved and adapted as they got into their late 30s and beyond? No, uh, absolutely not. Um, I've always respected, you know, the generation that came before me. 
And, um, you know, I've always, um, you know, saluted the guys that, that set the stones for us to be here today. Um, but I've never um, studied anybody's game and throughout their career on, you know, what I can implement to myself. Um, I've always had my own path and my own determination, my own uh, grind. I, I literally, like, put in the work, you know, every day, either from a physical or mental or spiritual part. Um, the game is always running through my veins, and I'm thinking about ways I can continue to improve uh, my game throughout my later stage of my career. So um, that's what it's about. LeBron, Evan Barnes, uh, commercial appeal. You mentioned the job being spectacular, but just from what you've seen, obviously, in the first game facing him to now, just how would you evaluate how much he's grown just over? From I got to go back and watch it. It all happened, you know, pretty fast. But the one thing I think that just, you know, probably hurt us the most uh, down the stretch was uh, the turnovers and, uh, you know, the one more play where the easy play to make one more pass to an open man. But, uh, you know, I got to go back and watch the film. Well, that's what I said. Uh, that was a play. I couldn't – I got blocked out, but I thought – and the guy's – telling me that maybe I'm wrong about it and I wasn't, I'm not wrong, but I just wasn't sure about what happened, but Malik got the throwback and I, and I know he wanted to swing it to Russ, but I think Tyus jumped into his passing lane to disrupt the rhythm of the pass and when Malik tried to put it down, it got deflected and disrupted, so uh, you know, Russ was going to be wide open there in the corner for, for an open three or an attack, so uh, but that wasn't the only play I mean, goodness, we had our opportunities we played a great first half with great ball movement uh, engaged defense, um, a defense that was uh, really battling on the glass. And, uh, you know, we were making an extra pass and executing with, with precision, and we just got away from that. Dan? You kind of just touched on it, but whether it's the turnovers or there's some mistakes around the room, um, just even stepping back to big picture, how much of like the failure to make the easy play or the simple play ahead of you guys? How much has that haunted you guys this year? Uh, a lot. A lot. That's a big part of my offensive edits, um, you know, and our offensive edits is, uh, you know, because teams really load up on the ball against us. I think you see that. And so just making that play in front of you, um, which is not a, a sexy play. It's not glamorous, but it's effective. And uh, that play often – if made enough times, will open up the floor for you. So that's something that we just got to keep working at. We're going to keep coaching it, and uh, I think eventually we'll get it consistently. Uh, well, there's just sort of a larger the 16 points in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Um, I mean, was it the easy plays that dried up for you in that period, or, or what? No, it was a lack of... of, of energy and effort put into making them work all um, defensively you know it turned into stand around and and, and watch and uh, you let a defense like Memphis stand and watch the way that they get after it and turn you over and protect the paint uh, you will get a 16 point quarter I mean we're coming off a 29 point quarter a ball movement sharing it good things happening do you have any other questions for Coach? Or what? Oh, man. All right. That's Kyle. Go ahead. One more. Yeah, just mm -hmm. also just asking Ja with the containment there. Um, obviously, he has uh, three corners. You can't it's hard to stop that. But what, what no, you can stop it. You can stop it. That's that's not true. Uh, I thought we, we let him get into a rhythm. We let them get to a rhythm. You, you know, it's all. Some Eric Spoelstra used to always say to me um, that I just rang true. When you let a guy get layups and free throws, and he gets to see that ball go through a couple times, a rhythm player, a guy that plays with the hang dribble and just plays in the rhythm with the game, whether you consider him a shooter or not, very often that basket gets very big for him. And tonight, that basket got big. And I said it before the game, the guy's a superstar, flat out, no doubt about it, 100% bona fide. He is a tough cover superstar. We all agree with Fizz, bona fide superstar for sure. Uh, interesting what he said, 
because it's an area that they've focused on is the defensive engagement. And they talked about it during that losing streak. We're going to win games. We have to do it on that end. But James, he said, they ran out, they ran out of offensive energy. And everyone who sits in that chair, and we all watch games together, we have seen that throughout this season, that lack of consistency from that end of the floor, the getting stale, getting stagnant. It didn't happen in the Houston game, and it results in a win. I know it's Houston. But I'm just saying, tonight you saw it, kind of the lack of execution. Things cut and start to break down yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I mean, look. They're, 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 they're peeping around the corner right now. You know, a couple games, they've shown us that they're starting to, to feel good about playing with one another. So back-to-back -back games uh, against a great player like Ja, they, you know, when maybe the mind gets a little weak, the legs are a little tired, and you result back to what's comfortable for you, not good. So they'll figure out, get some more players back, you know, they'll figure out that they can play four quarters and hello and welcome to access sportsnet lakers driven by your southern california honda dealers i'm chris mcgee i got metal world peace big game james worthy ali clifton we have brez and trudell handling the post-game interviews the lakers lose a tough one a close one on the road to memphis i do want to show you guys that last possession with the lakers down through got to this play really hurt them they had the game kind of uh, in, in, in a place where they could win it and i think you know uh turnovers and second possessions uh there was about three or four possessions in a row there where they just yeah. al allowed you know some turnovers and so but that last possession we, you got to get a better shot e e or either get a quick two i don't know i mean but you, you can't leave the game without getting the shot. That's just not acceptable. James, over your shoulder, we'll, we'll play it again. Manny, our director, we'll, we'll roll that in. And Meta Alley, you guys can, can take a look at it as well. I, I'm trying to see. You see Russ in the corner. He's going to be open for a second. I don't know if Malik looks there or if the defense comes over. Nope. Yeah, you, you got to, you know, he had to be able to know that yeah. Russ was over there and it should have been a catch. He never and, really did look. It, it had to be a catch. And pass right away. I'm not sure where he was going. Uh, penetrating they, when they needed three. They yeah, trust each other. This is where we ask Russ to trust you know, the bench players or the young players. But now you got to trust that Russ is wide open. He's going to make that shot. Look, I think you look at that scramble, too, on the defensive side of the basketball. You have to give Taylor Jenkins and his staff a yeah. ton mm -hmm. of credit. Mm -hmm. The more and more you watch the Memphis Grizzlies, they are for real. Mm -hmm. They all buy into the system. They understand expectations, and they don't quit. The scramble there, and especially down the stretch of the last handful of minutes, the way in which they continued to impose their will on the Lakers, that right there is a reflection of kind of what we saw over the last yeah. five. I'm actually glad you brought that up because – Really, we're just showing you that one play, and you'll see the rest during yep. the highlights. But it is about execution. And the Lakers missed opportunities down the stretch. I, I look at 13 offensive rebounds for Memphis. That led to 19 points. Yep. A couple of those were very big late in the fourth quarter. 17 turnovers by the Lakers. That leads to 19 points. But it's the ones that last four or five minutes that you remember. The one on the last play. Um, just missed opportunities. Big game. Yeah, and to, 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 to play, you know, three quarters the way they played, uh, including um, the victory, the game prior to uh, tonight, they're starting to like figure each other out, and they're starting to play really good basketball. I thought, you know, uh, up until the fourth quarter, when you said they gave up some offensive rebounds, demoralizing 50-50 balls, things of that nature, and uh, and 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 then the the stymie execution, you know. I